You're listening to the Tom Green Podcast. I'm broadcasting from my home in Los Angeles. I haven't left the house in five weeks. We're in the midst of a pandemic, as we know. And uh, man, what a weird world we're living in. I'm isolating. But while I'm isolating, I'm learning things that I've always wanted to learn. I'm having fun making music on my uh, drum machines and keyboards. I'm learning some technology with the mixing software that I use. I'm learning about my editing program, getting more and more into the weeds with some of the technology there. And I'm building a television studio to go along with this radio one, this podcast one. And it's going to be really cool. And within the next week, it's really going to be video, audio, fun, going live to the youtube.com slash Tom Green channel. I've always had a lot of help over the years, plugging in these shows and making these studios. But this is the first time I've built a studio completely by myself, in my house, by myself, plugging in the cables, plugging in the connectors, figuring it all out. But I wouldn't be able to figure out without the help of some very special and talented engineers and producers and broadcasters in Los Angeles and around the world who are all virtually connected with me now, as we're all virtually connected. And I check in with everybody and I get advice and I get ideas. And one of the greatest sources of advice for me over the years in this field of online broadcasting has been a man by the name of Philip Nelson. Uh, Phil Nelson runs a broadcasting company called Nelco Media out of San Antonio, Texas. And he was there in the early days of my web talk show, one of the few people back then who really understood this new technology that has since exploded and become very mainstream. We talked to Phil today about online broadcasting, the past, the present, and the future. Hello, Phil. Hello, Tom. How are you? Very good. How are you doing? Where in the world are you right now? Well, I'm back in San Antonio, Texas, enjoying some opportunities for quarantine and self-quarantine here in Texas. It's a busy time for you right now? Oh, it's insane. Um, You know, you've been working with live broadcasting for so long, but this quarantine has really opened up so many, you know, needs for people to communicate remotely. So needless to say, it's been pretty crazy. Yeah, absolutely. It's interesting to see so many people using technology that you and I were using back in the early 2000s when uh, when it didn't even really work that well. (laughs) Yeah, WebOvision, you know, I've told people for years that, you know, every celebrity is doing video and live videos and, you know, videos from wherever, but you were the first celebrity to ever do it. Am I a celebrity? And, and, and Am I a celebrity? Y- uh, yes, you were on Celebrity Apprentice, Tom. Oh, oh okay. Yeah, maybe I am. I, and, so, and, cele- and Celebrity Big Brother as well. Yeah, maybe, maybe yes, I am. Yes, that's true. I don't, know, I don't know if I am, but. Yeah, but, you know, they're all trying to do it, but, you know, you started this, the craze. I mean, it's like your post you did. Uh, a week ago about Joe Rogan coming on to live from Tom Green's house. I mean, that's where it all started. And, you know, it was, it was pioneering times. And, and, you know, the cool thing is, is it's, it's phase two of pioneering times because so many people can't work. They can't leave their houses and everybody's trying to figure it out. I mean, you look on television now, um, you know, every, even the NFL draft, one of the projects I'm working on right now is the NFL draft with the NFL network and they can't bring their talent into the studio. So they're trying to find new ways to cover this event that's going to happen. You know, I was visiting with a friend of mine at the NFL network and they said, you know, the draft could truly be done with phone calls and spreadsheets, but how, you got to turn that into a show and, and it's it's going to be a groundbreaking NFL draft this year. I remember when we started the Tom Green live internet show in my living room. I remember just thinking, because I had always had a website. I had a website in 1996, tomgreen.com, when I was doing my yep. show on public access. And we used to post blogs and photos. And then eventually we even had it set up 
in the in the nineties where I could post an audio clip. And I had a friend who was a computer programmer. I don't know if he used like C or something like that, or Linux or some sort of program programming language. And he created a thing where I had a little cell phone. I think this was 1999. And I could call in to a voicemail, and then it would automatically post the voicemail on TomGreen.com. And I was, having so oh, much, wow. I was having so much fun with that. I'd just be walking around New York when my show was on MTV, and I'd be leaving all these weird voicemails on my website. And we had a lot of people listening because there wasn't really stuff going on like that that was interactive and, and live and almost real time like that. But then when all of a sudden I heard about what you were doing and the technology with the the TriCasters and the video toaster system, and you could yeah. you could actually run some video cameras through a switcher and send it out onto the internet, and the internet was fast enough to process all of that live. That was mind blowing to me back in the early two thousands. Do you remember like coming up to my house the first time and helping me set all that I stuff do. up? I do, and I remember meeting your bird. Yep, yep, absolutely. Rex Murphy, absolutely. Rex Murphy. I, I got the honor of meeting Rex Murphy. And, uh, you know, the thing that was great about what you did, and, and, and it's, it, it's also a testament to why live is so important. You know, we live in a day where everything is so overprocessed and messaging is controlled down to the word. But when you go live, all bets are off and you don't know which direction it's going to go. And that's one of the things that that you are so good at is, you know, everybody knows the, the Tom Green personality from the Tom Green show on MTV. But once you started interviewing people and, and, and this is not a butt kiss, Tom, and I've said this for years, but when I first saw you do that, I felt like I was watching a modern day Johnny Carson because you make it interesting. You keep the, the humor there but you also let your ta- your guests talk, and you create real discussion. Absolutely, and, that, and I, I, I would never interrupt you while you're while you're complimenting me like that either. So yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's good. But seriously, I mean, it's it's like even live from Tom Green's house. You know, you had the who's who of people that are influential today, and then people like Buzz Aldrin and all these crazy people was Buzz Aldrin on your Axis show or was that on live? Yeah, he was on the Axis TV show uh, uh, okay. years later, but, but, uh, you know, it's funny, like it's this interesting thing c- to me because you were there when we s- first hooked up those Skype computers. Remember we were running them into the yes. TriCaster and I'd like yeah. to talk a little bit. I'd like to get into the weeds a little bit about some of the technology we were using back then and how it's evolved. I like to, I like to kind of paint a picture for, my listeners who might not be tech savvy like you yeah. to uh, kind of understand how it all works. What is a video toaster? What is a switcher? What is a tricaster? Well, you know, I'll even go back a little further. In the late in the mid 80s, Tim Jennison, who was the inventor of the video toaster, he had a quote that I'd used for years while I was at New Tech, and he said in the next 20 years your favorite TV show will be made by you or someone you know. And when he made that, that quote in the mid to late 80s, we didn't have the internet. We didn't even, you, could, you couldn't even dot, you know, go to a web browser at the time. There was no social media, but he predicted it. And he started making the technology to do that. And so when he released the video toaster, it was the first time you could do live TV on a computer. And that's what we started off with for your show was the uh, old video toaster for Windows. And then, you know, years later, you know, when the TriCaster came out in 2005, you know, you moved to that platform. But basically, the technology allows a video switcher allows you to plug in multiple cameras and switch between them. I mean, it's truth in advertising when you say video switcher. Yeah. (laughs) But when you're trying to tell a story, it's kind of like live editing. So instead of recording three cameras and then digitizing it into your computer and then editing three cameras together and making sure the audio syncs, you just plug your cameras in live and make your show and switch your cameras and then bring in some titles and roll in a video clip and nowadays you can stream it live and you know so really anyone can be a broadcaster and the funny thing about this because you're 
you know, as I said earlier, you're really good at interviewing people and making it interesting. And I kind of equate it to, you know, writing, you know, just because you have a word processor doesn't mean you're a writer. Just because you have a video switcher doesn't mean you're a live producer, you know? And so, you know, there is the talent side, but what the technology allows is if you are a good storyteller and you are good at X, Y, Z as part of this process, the tools are now easy enough to use. They're affordable enough that a good idea can see the world, can see the light of day where back in the early nineties, if you wanted to do a live television show, you had to get through the gatekeeper in the corner office in New York that would say, I like, or I don't like this show. And if they said, no, it'll never see the light of day. But you know, here in 2020, um, anybody can make a show and you see all the YouTube influencers and celebrities. And, you know, as someone who's worked in live television for over 30 years, you know, I I think, you know, some people like, Oh, they kind of look down on the, 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 anybody that just tries to do it. And I'm like more the merrier. One of the things that happens is when more people do it, you realize when somebody's really good at it or when something's really entertaining because there's a lot of lot to choose from. So, yeah, it's uh, sorry, my ADD kicks in and I go off on some wild tangents. Yeah, I, I love I love listening to you. I love talking to you because we talk about this all the time when we're not, you know, on the radio uh, or the internet or the Webovision or whatever whatever we want to call it this week, the podcast. But um, you know. It was so exciting when that happened. I remember the first time we plugged multiple multiple Skype computers into the switcher and we were taking all of these calls from around the world, two-way video. I just posted some clips on my YouTube channel of, like you said, Joe Rogan and Norm MacDonald. And I'm going to be putting more classic WebOvision clips up on my YouTube channel. But where are we now? What's Because I find it so funny right now. All of a sudden, all of a sudden out of nowhere, everything is multi-camera video at once. Instagram, you can click on your story and you can have a conversation in a dual screen. Yeah. FaceTime all of a sudden, you can, I was talking to my friend Phil and Brian last night, all three of us just had the, the FaceTime on like a three-way call video. All of a sudden there's all this, all these extra tools just in the, in the consumer social media stuff. Where are we now with the, 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 the heavy duty technology that you're working with? Well, it's what you're doing. I mean, you are at the leading edge because, you know, with, with WebOvision or with what you're doing now with the podcast and where it's going next, you, you are, you're, you're doing, you're at that bleeding cutting edge because the key for video to me is it needs to look like TV, you know, especially if you're a pro and you have, you want to get sponsors. I'm not talking about you particularly because you already have, you have an audience and all that. But if somebody's trying to create a, a show, let's say it needs to look like TV because my 11 year old daughter and my 96 year old grandmother are all TV experts. We know what TV looks like. And so when you communicate through video, if it doesn't look like TV, and doesn't have the same level of production value, then your credibility of the message is is eroded. And, and, you know, during this pandemic, um, you know, the quarantines nationwide, all, you know, every major city and people are locked down in their homes for going on a month, or maybe more now, it all seems to run together. But what's really been interesting is the demand for government video, you know, in, in living in San Antonio, most people didn't really care what the mayor had to say on a daily basis because it didn't, they, in their mind, it didn't affect their daily life. But now every time the mayor comes on and he does a daily broadcast now updating, you know, cases of COVID in San Antonio, how many hospital beds are full, how many respirators are being used, you know, uh, any new rules like tonight in San Antonio, they're, they're implementing a mandatory mask, um, ordinance, um, that if you go to the grocery store or anywhere, you have to be wearing a mask, but all of these municipalities now are there. They, they, their video people have been saying, we need this capability. We need this capability. But now the politicians themselves are like, 
we need this yesterday. When you have city managers telling their video team, how do we do this? We need it tomorrow. You, you know the, the power of live video and the urgency of live video because the information that they're getting out today could save a life today, you know, or a save a life in 14 days. If somebody, you know, doesn't take it seriously and they're not informed, it can endanger a lot of people. And so that's where, you know, everybody sees the, the, the shows on the networks where the Elton John is playing from his house and doing, you know, and just little webcam type stuff. But the real important stuff is what's coming from the, the, the local leaders, the governors, you know, the, the, the uh, congressmen, senators, the president, people need to hear this information. Um, and, and so that quality is being increased because once again, credibility is very important. And if it looks like they're sitting on a, if, if the mayor comes to you live sitting on a, you know, a wicker chair in his backyard with <laughs> trash all over the place, yeah, yeah. his credibility shot. Yeah. So it needs to look like TV. That's why I'm so excited right now about plugging in all of these new gadgets and, uh, and, uh, cables and microphones and lights and putting the studio together because like you said uh we're doing the podcast right now here i'm doing the podcast right now here alone in my house uh just audio only i'm getting the video dialed in with your help i really appreciate all the help you've continued to give me over the years uh, and uh, I don't want to put the video on. Or I don't want to flip the switch on the video until everything is just where we want it to be. So we're probably about a week or two away from just getting it just where we want it to be with all the the bells and whistles. But I got to say, these lights that you recommended to me are the coolest lights I have ever had. And I've been doing television since, you know, uh, since I was a kid. And Man, these they're they're it's they're uh, do uh, does everyone know about these lights? Roto light, they're amazing. They're, uh, Roto they... light is a you know a shameless plug. Tom, got to do it. You know, I, I build out TV studios for people, and 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 you know everybody from the NBA, NFL to city governments, and you know at NAB last year, I was hired as their live production expert, and so for your fans, NAB is the National Association of Broadcasters. It's the big conference where all the TV people come together and see what's new, what's interesting, and and see what the new trends will be. In fact, you moderated a panel there, the Super Session, um, that was amazing with you and Chris Angel, Norm MacDonald, and Callie Lewis, or Luria Petrucci is her real name. But last year at NAB, I was hired as their live production expert, so I would give tours of the show to like executives from the BBC or MSNBC, or Amazon, or whoever, and I would tell them what I thought was interesting. Excuse me. And uh, Rotolite was the coolest thing I saw there. And it's, you know, you think lighting is lighting, but it's really not. Um, Their lights were developed at Pinewood Studios in the UK. And, you know, your fans may be like, why do I care about Pinewood Studios? That's where they've shot all the James Bond movies. You know, I think Star Wars even shot some stuff there. It's the big movie studios. And so these guys come from a movie background, and they're like, we need to do something different with lights. And so most of their lights are round with a little badge in the middle that says Rotolite. But because of that badge, it casts the light in a new way that makes it softer. But then they also added in a lot of special effects. And I can't wait to see what you do with some of these special effects. Yeah. Because you're the only guy I know that could make eating corn funny. <laughs> and so... Um, That's a it, throwback. If, yeah. It, dude, I mean, your first virtual set, do you remember that? When yeah. you got in front of the TriCaster virtual set and was like, let's eat some corn. Yeah. I was like... <laughs> How can, I'm sitting here dying laughing yeah. and Tom standing here in front of a world map eating corn. Yeah, I like I eating corn. I don't know how you can... Uh, I like corn is delicious. I like I like delicious corn, uh, especially in front of a cool world map. Yeah, well, yeah, it's so much fun. The lights are so much fun. These special effects are really fun. I'm going to start uh, definitely doing some 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 wacko stuff with that for sure. Once once we get the cameras up and running, but man, it, it it's just really cool. It's 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 exciting because the other thing that's exciting is everything works now, right? Like it, it's sort of like yes. felt like when we first did it, it. it 
worked, but then sometimes it wouldn't work, whether the internet wasn't fast enough or the, the, the phone line, the internet line would go down or whatever. But now it's just everything is dialed in and it's working and it's, it's happening now. And the lighting here looks incredible. And uh, you're, you're advising me on some potential camera options that I should be looking at to yeah. make the visuals look incredible. But outside of what I'm doing here, because I'm kind of a, a freak example, you know, here in my house, <laughs> here in my house, putting this all together by myself. And, 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 you know, I, I, I guess I kind of know what I'm doing, but what about somebody that doesn't know what they're doing, uh, and doesn't really know how to start, but they wanted to kind of do a little show. How would they do that? How would they start? What would you advise to them? First of all, call you, right? And, and, uh, you've that would got, be you, the first call. Yeah. Call yeah. Nelco Media. Yeah. Yeah. Philip call Nelson. Nelco Media. Well, your website is, I'm looking at it right now. And, and you're, 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 you're out there in San Antonio, but you, you help people set up and consult people with key, people Our and stuff. Nation. Yeah. yeah. All over the world. Yeah. I like the, I like, yeah, I like the democratization of this in- industry. You know, I like the fact that any voice can get out there and, and, and be heard. So I want, I want you to help people out there who are yeah, looking to get into it this. Really, it really is in the world of where the best voice wins. You know, it's not who has the deepest pockets. It's who's interesting, who's creative, who is telling a story that people want to hear, the gatekeepers are gone. I mean, you could do free live video with your phone and a couple of lights and a halfway decent microphone. You know, we, not to get too geeky, but I'll tell one quick story. So I was working with Microsoft and they were doing webinars and I'm sure that you've seen a webinar or two and most of them are boring. And by the third or fourth minute, you're checking email because you're bored out of your mind And Microsoft was doing these technical webinars, and they were 30 minutes long, and the average view time was like less than five minutes. And so when I went in, I was like, guys, it's got to look like TV. Let's get good lights. Let's get good microphones. Let's get good cameras. And let's add the sizzle of TV. And we did that, and they saw their engagement go from two to five minutes to 36 minutes on a 30-minute webcast. And that extra six minutes was actually people asking questions at the end. So, you know, and that's a real, you know, dry example, but when things look like TV and they have the production value with good lights, good sound and good cameras, um, you know, you don't detract from your message. And if you're creative and interesting and have something good to say, then people are going to watch it. So say you're just like a regular kid. Let's say you're a 20-year-old kid, and you want to do a goofy talk show, and you want it to look look good, and you want to do a little more than just your phone. How would you get started? Is there a simple switcher you could get that's not going to break the bank? There's a free one that you can download called OBS. It's Open Broadcaster, and it's free. Yeah, And you can put it on a laptop, and it's a little bit of a headache to set up, but it's free. And if you're a kid wanting to do a show, guess what? You got some spare time. You're in quarantine. Figure it out. Yeah. But, uh, um, but you can switch your cameras. You can add in some graphics, and you can do it from any laptop. Um, it really is amazing. And, and then what happens is, is a lot of people that want to create a show – after they kind of test the waters and they have, a, they know they have a good story or they know have, they have an audience, then they can go out and get sponsors and actually start buying some higher end equipment. And, but th- there's no reason not to start today. If somebody has a fun idea or an interesting or important idea, because the technology is, is almost free now. Um, odds are you can scrounge up a camcorder. Um, you know, there's even ways to use your cell phone um, New Tech, who makes the TriCaster and partnered with Panasonic on the switcher that you're using, actually has an app that you can download for your iPhone, and it's basically an NDI camera. NDI stands for Network Device Interface. It's basically an IP. It turns your phone into an IP video camera yeah. that could be fed into a live switcher, which could go into OBS or TriCaster or whatever um, switcher supports NDI. But the technology is, is free or almost free to get started. And, and there's no reason that your fans can't, you know, start doing something interesting today. I and love they've it. got some time on their hands because hopefully 
they're being responsible humans and staying at home. Yeah, I love the interaction. You know, we used to have people, and we'll again soon, very soon, have people calling up on just Skype. But I, I can imagine a day where all the callers are calling up from multi-camera studios of their own, and they're cutting around on their end, and we're cutting on our end, and it's just so many cameras. Phil, I love cameras. <laughs> you need more. Well, you know, another area that's really a hot area right now is esports. Yeah. And we do, we've done a lot of esports. We worked with Twitch when they were starting their studio, and I've worked with a lot of esports tournaments and things. But that's what this OBS software is what a lot of those gamers use, and they'll take their computer screen, feed it in, then throw a camera on their face, and then they'll just stream their games. And there are kids making hundreds of thousands of dollars a month streaming video games and building an audience. But, you know, it's it's to me it's about – you have a good story, you're interesting, the tools are there for everybody to try it now and just play around with it. So I did have a question. So on your your new show that, that you mentioned earlier, are you are you actually thinking about letting fans call in or only invited guests? Like, oh no, are you yeah, we'll have we'll, that far? We'll 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 have the 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 viewers calling in, we'll have guests calling in. Uh, I'll be calling viewers, all the interaction that uh, I've always loved to do, and it'll be different every episode. Even on this podcast now, just with audio, I've been doing special uh, viewer, uh, listener calls episodes. So I, I, if you go oh, wow. and listen to the podcast. I did see that. I saw, well, yeah. I saw one of those. Yeah. yeah, and I love that. I've always, I, always, I always love to talk to real people from around the world, and we goof around and have fun. It's not just a, a, a celebrity interview every episode. So it's going to be so cool. And thank you, Phil, because you're always so helpful. And, and, you know, we've become good friends over the years, but, but you're always so helpful with me whenever I have a technical question, which I have probably an annoying amount of them. But um, Not at all. So, yeah, thanks a lot, Phil, for calling. And I thought this would be a cool conversation for uh, our viewers to kind of get a little understanding of uh, – and that's funny. I just said viewers again, and we're only on audio right now. I keep doing that. But, uh, you know, uh, our listeners right now today – and soon to be viewers, but I like I like for people to have a little bit of a glimpse into the the guts of the WebOvision, the internal workings of the kinds of conversations we have when we're talking about how to actually make this thing work. Yeah, behind the scenes at Tom's Green's house. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Okay, cool, Phil. Well, thanks I, I so much. Appreciate you having me. Yeah, of course. Um, I, I'll, I appreciate you calling, and we'll talk again soon. Okay. All right, stay healthy in COVID madness. Yeah, absolutely. Be safe. That was Phil Nelson from Nelco Media. Phil has always been a huge resource and help for me. Uh, you can check out his website, nelcomedia.net. Nelcomedia.net is a broadcasting and technology company uh, based in San Antonio, Texas. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Tom Green Podcast. You can follow me on Instagram at Tom Green, on Twitter at Tom Green Live, Facebook, and YouTube, youtube.com slash Tom Green. All of these audio podcasts are being posted on YouTube, but as soon as the video comes on, uh, very soon you're going to be seeing that in its multi-camera glory on youtube.com slash Tom Green and on TomGreen.com very soon. Please be safe out there, everybody. I hope you're enjoying the content that I'm bringing to you on a daily basis. I want you to know that you are helping me uh, with this COVID-19 pandemic uh, by being there and listening. It's very cathartic for me to have this place to speak my mind and do what I love to do, make goofy WebOvision broadcasts. So thank you. You're the greatest fans in the world. And I see that the numbers are growing, so you are telling your friends. So tell more of your friends. And let's uh, take this WebOvision into the future. Thank you. See you later. Be safe.